In this video, we're going to be talking about the problem of finding the area of a surface of revolution. So our goal will be to find the area of a surface generated when some curve, say y equals f of x or x equals g of y, over some interval is rotated about the x-axis or the y-axis. Um, so we're going to go through part of the derivation to think about how we can find a formula for the area of the surface of revolution. And we'll go through the formula for um, thinking about a rotation about the x-axis. So what we have in mind is some kind of curve here. Let's say something like this, y equals f of x over the interval from a to b. And um, notice that I just have the curve, not a region. I'm not creating a solid. I'm just interested in creating a surface here. And then talking about what the area of that surface is. So to think about finding the area of our surface, we'll first think about splitting up this interval into lots of subintervals, like we do in lots of our different application problems. And think about what happens if I just rotate some um, piece of this curve about the x-axis. Let's say I had a little piece that I was going to rotate um, about my x-axis. What kind of shape would that create? So I'm, I'm approximating my curve with a little line segment on a little small interval and thinking about what that is going to create. So I'm going to have something that looks like the following. So it'll be something like this, some little band-like region here. Um, so what I want to try to do is figure out a formula for this kind of shape. So I need a formula. for the surface area of this band. Okay. So let's think about this. So let's put a little bit of maybe some notation on here. Um, notice that my um, band here Okay, which would be rotated about my, my x-axis, um, would have um, a circular piece at the, at the top and the bottom. So let's call this um, bigger piece uh, radius 2, the smaller piece radius 1. And then I would have some length of my line segment over the interval. Let's call that L. Well, notice that this band here um, can be seen as actually the bottom part of a cone. So let me fill in this piece here. So I have this R1. So it looks like my um, band region that I'm interested in, or excuse me, my surface that's formed by this band, um, could actually be found if I knew what the, um, the surface areas of these two cones were. If I could take the big cone surface area minus the small cone surface area, that would give me the surface area of the band that I was looking for. Okay, so let's go through that a little bit, and that'll show us um, a big part of where our uh, integrand is going to come from in our formula for surface area. So notice that the surface area of the band is going to equal the surface area of a big cone minus the surface area of the small cone okay so well we need to know the geometric formula for the surface area of a cone and notice that I actually want just um, what's called the lateral surface area of the cone just the outside sort of slanted part of the cone I don't care about the surface area of, of um, of a circular base part of the cone because that's not actually part of my surface. My surface will be open um, at either end. So note that the formula for the lateral surface area of a cone, meaning just the sides, is given by pi r l. Okay, pi times the radius times the length of the, um, the slant along our cone. Okay, so using what we have here, notice that the surface area of our big cone will be pi times our 2 
times the whole length of the big cone. So let's label this other little part L1. So I would have L1 plus L here minus the surface area of that small cone. Well, that would be pi times R1 times L1. Okay. So then we can go through this doing a little bit of algebra and see how we can simplify this down to um, a nice formula for ourselves. So if I factor pi out of here, I'm going to have pi times R2L plus R2L1 minus R1L1 here. Okay, so what else can we do with this? Well, notice that each of these two terms has L1 in it, so I'm going to call this R2L plus L1 times R2 minus R1. Okay, and what I'd like to do is rewrite this L1 times R2 minus R1 in terms of just this L. And it turns out that if we use similar triangles, we can uh, rewrite this part here into something that's a little bit more helpful. So if I think about the triangles that I have going on here, this part here, the smaller part, um, is L1. The part on the, just the bottom part here of this triangle would be L. This would be R2. This would be R1. So I could write that L1, oops, this is L1 here, um, over R1, okay, would be equal to L plus L1 over R2. Okay, so I'm going to skip a little bit of the algebra here just so we can sort of see where we're going with this. So by doing some cross multiplying and rewriting a couple of things, I can find that L1 times R2 minus R1 is actually equal to R1L. Okay, so this is helpful because now I can take what I have here and rewrite this as R2L plus R1L. Okay, and now let's think a little bit about our band again. So I have this band whose surface area I'm trying to find. I had a smaller radius and a bigger radius involved here. Okay, but we know that these bands are going to um, be over each of our small intervals. And as we make those intervals smaller and smaller, you can think about um, R1 and R2 getting closer and closer together. So it'll be practically the same thing. Um, we could also think about um, the fact that the, the midpoint of that interval would essentially be the same as R1 plus, um, as R1 and R2. So if we let R be equal to the average of these two things, okay, then we could call, whoops, two times R, R1 R plus R2. Okay, so that allows us to write down the following formula where I have 2 pi R L. Okay, so thinking about R is like coming from the, the midpoint of our interval or thinking just of the fact that these bands are going to become really, really skinny. So this R1 and R2 are practically the same. We have the following formula 2 pi R L for the surface area of that band. Okay, so thinking about how we're going to find the formula for our um, surface area, this is essentially like what we would have been doing in maybe a volume problem if we had all these disks that had area pi r squared. I end up integrating something um, of the form pi r squared because it's like I was summing up these different um, areas of disks times a little width over each piece. Here the idea is that I'm summing up something of the form 2 pi r l representing the surface area of a band on each of my little sub intervals. Okay, so let's look at putting this together into our formula here without going through um, the Riemann sum type thing. We know that that's going to be the form of our integrand. So here's our summary for um, f positive with f prime continuous, just like we have with arc length, we want f prime to be continuous so the derivative will exist. Um, the surface area of our surface obtained by rotating our function over our interval between a and b about the x-axis will be an integral from a to b. Okay, remember we had this 2 pi r l was going to be the form of our integrand? Well, thinking about our little uh, curve here and then um, 
thinking about the radius piece. Well, when I would rotate this, okay, I have my radius here would be the distance between my curve and the x-axis. So that's going to be my f of x. So I'm going to have 2 pi f of x. And then this L piece, well, that was coming from the length of the curve. Well, what was our arc length formula? Well, that was the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. Okay, so the idea is that I have this 2 pi radius length involved in my surface area formula. So we went through that part of that derivation here to help us remember what this surface area formula is, that it's based on summing up these different surface areas of these bands that each have this surface area that's 2 pi times the radius times the, the length of our curve on each of those pieces.